What is up, Copy Squad? It's your boy, Kyle Milligan of KyleTheWriter.com, and today we're going to talk about how to practice copywriting, and I put hint, hint, get paid. Um, so basically, uh, this done, stems from a question I got on YouTube, and the question was, when you first started copywriting, how do you push yourself to practice every day? How do you overcome the resistance to start practicing? Um, so basically, the question is, like, it's part of, like, it goes hand in hand with how do you become a great copywriter. Like, it's kind of one and the same because becoming good at copywriting is practice. And that's because I believe that copywriting is a language that you must practice daily and you must immerse yourself in if you want to become skilled at copywriting. That's why I wrote a whole book about the language of copywriting called Take Their Money. Uh, you can get that book at kylethewriter.com forward slash book. And again, copywriting is a professional language, so I want to start first and foremost about that. And why I call it a language is because people believe that copywriting is very simple because it's written in simple English, usually between like a, like a fifth, sixth, seventh grade write, uh, reading and writing level because that is the easiest to consume type of writing. So people see this really short, easy to read copywriting and they think that's really simple, I can do that. But the, the magic of copywriting is that it is a language that is communicated subtly beneath the words. The simple English words are just words, but the subtle communications that happen beneath the surface communicate directly to your emotional brain. And uh, there are only really, there's like four big emotions that I preach that if you can trigger these emotions, you can sell pretty much anything. Um, today I was at the gym and a personal trainer was like, hey man, I'm trying to catch your live videos. I see them pop up on my Facebook every day. And I was like, my live videos, my sales videos? And he's like, yeah, man. And I was like, I never really thought about that. But a personal trainer can definitely use new, easy, safe, and big to sell their personal training services. Um, so the the question, I'm going to, let's, let, let me, let's touch on that for just a second. Let's say I'm a personal trainer. And I wanted to sell, I'm getting off topic already. Uh, I want to sell my personal training services. The first thing I would do is, you know, use new and only. And you can use, um, you know, I'm, I'm the only dude in the area specializing like in XYZ sort of fitness maybe. Or uh, you can use like safety. You can use like your credentials. I know people love to load up their credentials like uh, where they've been certified and stuff like that. Or you can use testimonials as a personal trainer to uh, load up on safety. Uh, the safe emotion, number three. Uh, easy is, you know, all you got to do is show up one hour a day, four days a week, and I can whip you into shape in no time. And big, new, easy, safe, and big. Uh, the big one would be like, a, you'll, the transition will be night and day, like the transformation in your body, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so yeah, get my book, Take Their Money, at kylethewriter.com forward slash book. And no matter what you sell, you can sell using new, easy, safe, and big. Um, the new one, you'd probably use the um, news alter ego, which is only if you're a personal trainer. And that would be uh, news alter ego. Its multiplier is new and only, meaning like you can only get these services through me as a personal trainer. It's gonna be a little bit difficult, but what? Because you, because everyone can. There's there's so many personal trainers, but how are you unique? Well, you can use your testimonials and stuff to establish that you offer a one of a kind special level service. Totally went on a tangent there, but it just struck me, and I was like, and and, and um, this is oh, let's use this. Let's use this. Okay. So how do you get yourself to practice every day? Let's talk about how to practice copywriting every day. There's three things you got to do. And I just did one. I just did one right here in front of you. Uh, it's read a piece of copy a day, write a piece of copy a day, and come up with an idea a day. So today I've written some lift letters for a new promotion I've got out with Agora Financial. Um, I've read past lift letters that I wanted to uh, try to see if I could emulate what worked for those and use them in my own lifts, right? So I, I read some copy, I wrote some copy, and I submitted it. And now the third thing is come up with an idea. So just by writing those lifts, I had to come up with a subject line, a second subject line, and then some copy. And that's kind of coming up with an idea. Just coming up with a subject line is an idea, right? And then just now I came up with an idea like, okay, how could I use new, easy, safe, and big to promote a personal trainer's services? And I just blap, 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 blap. So when I say come up with an idea a day, that's what I'm talking about. Like whenever you have an opportunity to flex your copywriting muscle, do it, right? Just do it. Those three things. Do that every day. Read a piece of copy, write a piece of copy, and come up with an idea a day. Um, it will help you become better at this. You just need to constantly be practicing new, easy, safe, and big, okay? And you can do that no matter what it is that you're selling. That's part of, like, your daily practice, your daily routine. Um, and you don't have to, like, do copywriting courses for that. You don't have to, like, go uh, 
do anything crazy like buy a bunch of stuff or pay a bunch of money. If you just do those simple practices every day, that'll get you going, right? That'll get your momentum rolling and get you in the right direction. Um, you could try, and you could try doing this like rewriting copy for websites that you see, for instance. Uh, whenever you visit a website, maybe what you might want to do is consider, okay, I see this website's copy. Maybe it's maybe it's perfect copy. Maybe it's great copy. All copy can kind of be tweaked and, and changed a little bit and just say, hey, how can I throw new, easy, safe, and big in there? So um, that's like another little, that's like coming up with an idea every day, like just scanning all the time and practicing. So the question, <laughs> I've been talking for like 10 minutes and I haven't even addressed the question yet. Uh, let's see what we got. Where is that? What up, Zeth? Welcome to the live. Sa Saad, welcome to the live, guys. Thanks for joining in today. I just went over, if anybody in here is a personal trainer, I just kind of went over Weirdly, I just like jumped on like, hey, how can I sell personal training services? And I just kind of like jumped into that. But that's uh, that's not even what the topic of the question was supposed to be today. Um, the question is how to practice copywriting, and I kind of just did it in real time. Like I'm just always kind of like, okay, I've got this you know new easy safe and big in my book. How can we apply it to everything? So that's kind of what I did. But this question is specifically how do you overcome the resistance to start practicing? And I have a very direct answer for that, and it's in the hint: get paid. Okay, so when I am breaking down a promo, like, I'll tell you, man, I've heard and seen, like, people will say, uh, okay, here's some things that I've heard and seen. People will say, I don't know where to start. How do I get my first client? I don't have anything written down. What up, Brandon? Um, and they'll say, uh, where do I start? And, and then someone on Facebook or something will say, well, you need to just, just write something. You need a portfolio. And the person will say, I don't know what to write. And they'll say, well, write like a spec piece, basically like a free piece of copy for a client. Uh, for me, I won't lie. That's never been like a viable option for me. I, I can't work. I can't find myself to be motivated to practice or work for free. It wasn't until I got the job and I felt the pressure was on and I had a responsibility to write good copy and I wanted to um, perform at a high level. Like I work at Agora Financial as a copywriter and I don't want to look like a scrub. So when I get a project, I, I just become intensely motivated to practice. And I still do the same three things, right? Read copy, write copy, and come up with ideas. And that's like the basic gist of it. But what gives me the motivation to sit down and break down a sales letter is I have a job to do. So usually at the very onset of this channel, when I was just breaking down promos live, that's basically all this channel started out as I just, I just sit there and I read sales letters and break them down. And I didn't really talk like this, like explain, uh, sit here and go over big concepts and theory. I would just break down sales letters live on the camera. During that time, all the sales letters that I was breaking down were usually the first batch were system backend promotions that had made millions. Um, and the reason I was breaking those down specifically is because I wanted to write a system backend promotion and I wanted it to make millions. So I was specifically taking down those guys. All right. That's just part of the research process. Before I start writing, I go and look out at the world and see what it is that other people are doing. And then I try to emulate the things that I like the most about that or whatever, whatever I think I try to find ideas that would mesh very well with my idea or my project that I'm going to be working on. So before I started, you know, I guess that's practice. Before I started the practice, I had like a goal. And I think that's the hard part is it's really difficult. Like how do, you, how do you know where you're going? How do you know what to practice, what to do if you don't have a destination, right? That's like an age old thing. Like how do you know where you're going without a map or without a destination? And I think what you got to do is you, you, it's almost like find the client first, right? Find someone to write for first. And for me, that was, I had to go get a job. Like I, I, I'm not like the freelance hustler guy, even though people ask me, you know, like, how do I get my freelance client? If it was me, um, I would start with credibility. I've talked about that in another video in the past about how to get clients. I started with credibility. I went and I worked with people where I could learn a lot. <clears throat> I built my portfolio on the job. And now people ask me, like, I don't go looking for people. I don't beg people to hire me. I don't send out a million emails a day. I sit right here at my house and people say, hey, can you work for me? I say, I'm really busy with other projects. I can't right now. So um, I, I would have it be like, it's almost inbound, this whole YouTube thing, all my all my sales and stuff. I still haven't run ads for my book. I still make sales every single day. It's all inbound. Like I'm kind of just like building a platform, building credibility. And I am now working on the outbound stuff. I'm now working on the sales letter for my book and then I'll run advertisements and I'll bring, and that'll bring people to my, my channel and my platform and stuff. So the question is, how do I 
break the resistance to start practicing copywriting? Well, it started with I knew the project that I needed to write, and then I got to work on writing that project. And the practice led me to that final goal. So maybe even if, let's say, okay, let's say you don't have the capacity to go get a client or you want to build that portfolio first. How do you still practice copywriting without a client? Or uh, how do you get these copywriting exercises that I give you? You know, read a piece of copy, write a piece of copy, come up with an idea. How do you put those into practice with no financial motivation or anything like that? Okay, here's another frame of mind, okay? Tr consider this. When I wrote the back-end product that I just put out, it took me from November, it just went out on Friday, last Friday. So, that is a couple months, right? That's a couple months. I submitted it, I think, right around New Year's. So, like half of November and December, I was writing no pay. There was, there was only the hope that this would work. I had an idea, and I started writing, and um, technically I collect my salary at Agora, and the, and the money I made from my past promotions. But when you really think about it, all the work I was doing, there was no money guaranteed, okay? So it helps if you're not already flat broke and without a job. Um, I read that, I don't know, you know, maybe this is true, maybe not, but it seems right, that if you're stressed and you're broke and your back's against the wall, your creativity suffers. So I think if I could go back and do it over, what I did is I went broke and homeless for two years until I finally gave up and got a job at Agora Financial, which is it's like, I wish I'd have done that sooner. But, um... If you're if you're back against the wall and you're broke and you're like freaking out, you're not going to be able to have that patience and creativity and really do a good job. So I say, you know, have a stable income. If I could go back and do it over, I would have kept my day job or whatever I was doing and did moonlighting on the side and, and tried to build my skills on the side. So let's say you've got a stable foundation. You're not freaking out. Okay, so that's first and foremost. Then the other thing is you need to come up with a goal. You need to come up with a project. Okay. And that project could be, I've seen people recommend before, why don't you go ahead and write the sales letter and then submit it to the client and say, hey client, I'd like you to run this sales letter and see if it works. The job's already done, right? In that case, I think that could work. If if the person is receptive and aware of you, it's kind of like, um, it's a little risky though, because if you write the whole letter, I guess you could use it for a portfolio piece or something maybe, but if they reject their letter outright, it's kind of like proposing marriage to a stranger. Like you put all this time and effort and you had all these big dreams and then they just say no. Like That could be terrible, right? That'd be a huge misfire. So maybe hit them up and say, hey, what's up? I'm a copywriter. Never say I'm brand new. Don't say, hey, that's the one time new as an emotion is not good. <laughs> like saying like, I'm untested and unproven and I'm brand new to this, use my sales letter. People are going to be like, no way, dude, because that, that goes against emotion number three, safety. That's not safe. It's not proven. It's not verified. That's very dangerous. I'm not putting my business in the hands of a newbie who doesn't know what the hell they're doing. So let's say here, let's go step by step. One, I've got a foundation. I'm not freaking out. I would like to be a better copywriter. I know I need to read, write, and come up with an idea every day, okay? I go over all this stuff in my book, Take Their Money. It's at kylewriter.com forward slash book. You can learn how to write the words that really make you rich. And... Uh, I can't say you can grow 7 million, but I was able to use these skills to grow 7 million, 7.1 million at Agora Financial in a single year. I cannot promise that you will. But, um, so anyway, let me see if I have any questions. I'm going to go back through my steps in just a second. All right, questions. Okay, cool, cool. All right, I'm going to come back to these questions in just a minute. So let's, let me go over my steps one more time. So one, I have a foundation. I'm comfortable. I'm not freaking out. Two, I have like a... I've been watching Kyle Milligan's YouTube videos, and I think I am interested in the financial copywriting space. I'll say, disclaimer, I was not interested in financial anything. I have a couple stocks to my portfolio. I am not like a heavy investor in stocks. As a matter of fact, I'm now trying to get into the real estate game. So um, I'm not even like a big stocks guy, but I still write for financial newsletters because I'm writing to customers' pain points. I'm not trying to teach them about the stock market. So you do not have to be like a stock expert to write for financial copywriting. So anyway, um, so you say, I'm okay, I'm, I'm stable. I want to work on a financial copywriting project. I wanna go find some guy who's selling like a stock trading program on, you Google it, stock trading or something like that. And you find a guy who's got a sales letter and he's not for Agora Financials. So you're like, hey, I'm gonna try to write a sales letter for this guy, okay? So maybe like reach out to this dude and say, hey, what's up? Really like your sales letter. I would love to get a chance to, um, you know, see if I can improve or beat your control 
you know, layer in some new easy, safe, and big. Be like, you know, if you've got a track record that you can lean on, don't tell them anything like negative, but say, hey, I've got some neat ideas and concepts for you. I'd love to give it a shot. You can review it, of course, and see if you like it, and we'll go from there. He responds, that says, hey, man, whatever, I'll try it. Cool. Now you have a goal. Now you have a project. Now you want to write a financial sales letter. So what you do is you realize that this dude has a system. He's selling a system, a stock picking system. So the first thing you would do is you'd say, okay, I need to find good stock picking systems. So I offer a swipe file for that very thing, like kylethewriter.com forward slash swipe for the swipe file. And you have access to my swipe file that has a bunch of promos about stock trading systems. So you can do what I did. I, I know I have to write a system promo for stock picking. I go read a bunch of successful system promos for stock picking, and that could be for anything. Let's rewind. Let's say you're stable. You want to write some copy, so you reach out to this health guru that you really love. You say, health guru, you changed my life. You got me six-pack abs, and I'm so happy with my health now. Uh, one thing I'd love to help you out with is I'm actually a copywriter, and I help with sales conversions for websites. I'm just so happy for the value you've given me. I would love to offer a chance to up your sales and get your message out there because you're so fantastic. All right, so that's it's really good stroking the ego, making them feel important, and it gives you like a good case for reaching out to them. And then you start writing their sales letter. So before you ever start, you first practice. You first go find other people who are very successful in the health niche who have sales letters and you start to read their sales letters and in the margins you're doing active reading which I teach you and take their money kylewriter.com forward slash book and then you go uh, <laughs> change the pitch to keep you engaged I also gotta get closer and further away they said alright so um, then you go do the same thing now you have a goal I think that's really what's important is you have to have a goal you have to have a focus you can't just be aimlessly practicing copywriting like if you do that you're not gonna get anywhere you gotta have a vision, dude. What did I say? Was it two videos ago? Man, I can't keep up. I said, big vision, baby steps. Big vision, baby steps. You wanna be a copywriter? You wanna gross millions every single year and all that stuff? Well, you gotta start writing copy. So how do you do that? Go ahead and find someone who lets you write some copy for them. All right, and then you wanna start doing it right. You wanna do it the right way. If you put out some garbage, if you don't do research, if you don't check out other sales letters and find out what's working out there, if you don't, like, the letter, let's say it took me from November to, to like J early January to write my last letter. Most of that time was spent doing research, reading other promos, breaking them down, um, looking online for pieces that like support and proof that supported my argument, like stuff like that. It's, it's, yeah, it doesn't come from here. The, the, the sales letter comes from the research. You just basically take what the audience gives you, you take what the, the market says, you take the information that's out there on blog posts and news articles and scientific journals, and then you figure out a way to compel, craft an argument. All right? It's a lot of research in there. So that's why it's good to have a foundation and not be panicking and not be like, oh my god, my back's against the wall, I've got to write this copy now. I don't, I'm not a big fan of that. I don't think it's healthy. right? Like, and for all the success stories, for every like one success story you find on like Twitter or Facebook or something like that, of people who did that, there's probably like 999 people who were miserable and broke and got themselves in trouble for, for behaving like that. So um, yeah, so I say start with the foundation. You need to create a goal. To create a goal, you need to probably go find someone to write for. It could be a job or it could be just like a freelance dude or like someone you found online. You reach out to them and say, hey, I think your thing's great. I mean, that's even better if your customer coming to them as a customer. Say, hey, I think your thing's great. I'd love to write a sales letter for you and try to beat your control just because I love you so much. And I know your product inside and out. Like, that's flattering and maybe helps the other person make money. Okay. Oh, it's probably better to do that if um, if uh, if that person is not like um, – basically, don't try to do that for a copywriter, I wouldn't say. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But if I like, if you, if you're not proven and you're trying to uh, do what the person's already doing, I don't know. That's neither here nor there. Just kind of crossed my mind. But anyway, so yeah. Then you have a reason to practice. Like, what's that resistance to practicing? The resistance to practicing is there's no reward in this for me. Nothing's guaranteed. But however, if you at least have like some sort of like goal, like when this goes out, I can make a bunch of money. That's so much easier than this idea of like doing spec work, where it's like, oh, this would be great for my portfolio. Like that portfolio isn't worth jack if if like if it doesn't make money, right? For me, it's like I practice every I, I, 
I say like the big emotion. Number four, big, has to move the needle in the customer's life. It's the same thing for you as a human being. You don't want to sit around and do spec work just to have a cute portfolio. You want to do stuff that moves the needle in your copywriting career. Some people would argue that having a spec portfolio is part of the needle moving. For me, putting money in that pocket is part of the needle moving. That's why we do it, man. Like copywriting is pretty neato, bido, bandito, I'd say, but I really do it so I can collect passive income every single day on sales letters I wrote February of 2018, okay? So I think that's the motivation. I don't really have to push through resistance. It's, it's the opposite. I'm not pushing through resistance. I am heavily incentivized to practice. There, there is, the resistance is not necessarily there. It's, it's like the opposite. Like, it's like if I don't practice today, I'm not going to make that money. Like, where's the resistance? So I think that's another thing. It's like, start somewhere where you're, start somewhere where you're secure enough that you can take your time, do it right, do the research. But at the same time, you have to be actually taking action. Sitting around reading theory and reading books and and like pondering and pontificating about copy, it's not going to make you any money. So if I could stress it to you, like immediately find a way to put yourself in a position where you have to come up with some copy, and that should probably be getting a client or a job who requires you to write some copy. Okay, cool. So let's see what we got in the comments here. My God, I should have been checking these. All right, cool, cool. Brandon says, what's up, what's up, Kyle? Sod wrote, kylewriter.com forward slash book. Thanks. I'm going to give that guy a heart. Um, let's see. When active reading pieces of copy, do you just go for the big four or do you outline the emotions the writer is targeting? Um, okay. So... I'll point you first towards like just go to the YouTube channel if you've seen the YouTube channel and go to the earlier stuff at the bottom of my YouTube channel there are playlists and you can watch me break down sales letters the most recent one is probably one of my best ones it's for a book promotion and uh, that one will show you I basically am kind of looking for just the big four when I'm talking about emotions but I do a lot I look for a lot of things that are not necessarily just the big four and if you go to those old YouTube videos, like when this channel first started around October of 2018, that's all I was doing was breaking down these promos, and I was like illustrating the objection, the claim, the proof, the benefit that they were using. And uh, it wasn't until probably the last like a uh, couple months that I was able to take all the things that I was seeing and narrow it down and categorize it into the big four emotions and their alter egos. There were times when I'd have like six emotions. And I'd have like fast and big and new and easy and safe. And it wasn't until I really started like doing the YouTube channel and, and really paying a lot of attention, concentrating, that I saw actually these are all tied together in their own very unique ways. And that's really uh, that's how I was able to come up with the ideas for the book. But yeah, when active reading, I look for a lot of stuff. If you go to that swipe file, you'll see my notes. Um, they cover like I wonder if I could just show you uh, really quick. This is, you know, it's a good question. Like, what am I looking for? And I, I know that the growth of the channel, especially as of late, has been pretty big. So there are a lot of people who probably have never seen me like sit down and just break down a sales letter, which used to be like exclusively all I would do. So I think it would be helpful to kind of look at that really quick, whilst we answer these questions here. Documents and swipe file. Okay my YouTube swipe file here and I think one of my favorite ones my most recent one was by uh, the Palm Beach research group and it's the we snuck through promotion so here's it is all marked up now I'm gonna share my screen with you here in just a second so you can see this um, all right all right all right please have the markings there they are okay cool so let's, let's share the screen so this should look like that's perfect okay so Here's the Palm Beach Research Group's uh, We Snuck Through promo. So you'll see I marked up quite a bit on this. So you can see over here in the top left-hand corner. Let me zoom in because I know that this has a, a, a weird habit of looking very blurry in standard definition. So at the top here, most of these, you know, these pretty much all of these are promotions. These are all uh, sales letters up top, these tabs. And then you'll see here I'm talking about the four U's. Okay, I'm looking for that in the headline. Here's the big four emotions, so anything written in green will reflect the big four emotions. Uh, this thing on the right-hand side here is Clayton Makepeace has this formula. He has a 20-point 20 20 point checklist, I think, for a sales letter. Um, I only really pay attention to the first four that he uses. 
uh, because I think they're really important for the headline and the first couple lines of the lead. That's what that yellow is. So you see the yellow marking here and here all the way down? Anything you see in green is the big four emotions, okay? And then over here, like here's a little note about bullets, right? Bullets must, one, force the reader to ask how, and two, be specific. Can you see that written in the, in the side here? And this is part of the swipe file that um, I offer. Let me see if I can move this so I can still see everything. Okay, now I can see myself. Okay, cool. So yeah, this is part of my swipe file. Whenever you sign up for my email list, you get access to this stuff. So here, just a little info, we're expanding on the bullet. You can see um, more green. You see new, easy, safe, and big is throughout that entire time. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is kind of what I do, man. That green, all of this is credibility, enhancing the safety. More green, new, easy, safe, and big. Um, and then right here is a little cool note. All bullets should be new. Um, and because they force the reader to ask, how is this possible? They have to be new and novel. They have to be something like, I don't understand this. I've never heard of this before. What is this? So it's kind of like an inside look, um, I guess you could say, at uh, how I break down a sales letter and active read. But yeah, man, I mean, that's not that's not like secret stuff. Like, I give that away for free, man. It's on the YouTube channel, and you can get that swipe file. When you sign up for my email list, you get a welcome email, and then you automatically have a link in that welcome email. will take you to uh, that drive that has all my swipe files. Okay, so I hope that answers that question. Saad, thanks for that question. Uh, Brandon says, I just wrote a bunch of advertorials for Stansberry and Associates and kept sending them in. They don't take as long as a sales letter, and it gave them a good chance to see what I can do. Okay, that's a good idea too for anyone trying to get started. <clears throat> uh, Gabriel, what up? He says, what about just writing the lead? What about revamping an existing promo versus proposing something new? No, yeah, it's totally, totally great. I think what I want to stress is you need to have a goal. Like you need to have some sort of project to work on. And I think just aimlessly, like, and the word aimless is probably good, but it's kind of harsh. Like just aimlessly, like I'm going to write the three, the, do the three exercises today. I think that's where people get lost is I'm assuming that people doing this are selling something. I'm assuming that you're either a copywriter or you're a small business owner or like a personal trainer. You're someone who wants to reach out to clients, right? So you have some sort of sales process. You have some sort of, I, I need a new client, how do I get them? That's what I'm kind of assuming when I'm teaching you copywriting is that you are selling something. So it doesn't matter. You don't have to sit down and write a whole sales letter, bro. You just gotta have a goal, right? If you have a nine to five where you are, let's say you're an accountant, this probably isn't gonna be very helpful for you. Like if you don't sell anything, then um, my suggestion would be to start selling something, either your copywriting services or some other product, or, I mean, that's really it, man. You gotta sell something. If you're not selling anything, then it doesn't matter. And then once you have a goal for something to sell, then all these principles become very relevant and useful and profitable. So you don't have to, you don't have to write an entire sales letter. If you wanna get that guy's business and you think you could do it by just writing the lead and presenting a new and novel idea to this person, then do it. If you did the three things in the lead, like think about it, you, you read some other leads, okay? You went and read like five other leads, okay? Let me show you something. This is, this is from my old office. I'm remote now, okay? So look, this is a box full of manila folders, all right? So before I had this Surface book, this is how I did research, dude. Like I would go and I'd say, okay, I gotta write a promo. I'm gonna go find five other leads that do the thing that I'm trying to do. Like here's a promo, there's a promo, um, there's a promo. So I would just do that, fill these up with like, okay, I need to go find five promos that do the promo things that I wanna do. So if you think you wanna write a lead and it's easier and shorter and you can make an impact, find like three, I'd say five, I'd say five, find leads, read them, throw out two of them. Okay, just take everything you can from them. Cool, you got some information, throw away two of them. Now you've got three left. Break three of them down with active reading. Like really dig in, okay? And figure out what you like about them, what made them work, okay? Then throw away one, or maybe even throw away two. And now this one, the last one remaining, or the last two, these guys are your models. You wanna emulate those guys. See, now that now you've got now you've got a whole step-by-step -step process, right? You wanted to write a lead. So this is but you're doing it, man. You're you're reading a piece of copy, you're writing a piece of copy, and you're coming with an idea through this process. It's automatically happening whether you wanted it to or not. So that's kind of what I recommend there. So writing a lead, um, proposing something new. What about revamping an existing promo versus proposing something new? Yeah, totally, whatever. I think the main 
I think the main important part is that you have a goal. Like you can't just be writing all willy nilly. And that's why I say, like, I assume that you're selling a product. Your goal is to sell some product. Okay. Uh, Saad says, Brandon, how long did it take you to write those advertorials? That's side conversation. Um, <clears throat> all right, still moving along here. All right, so uh, Brandon says, can I share something I wrote about how I ended up talking with Ryan McGrath, Joe Schrafer, and Patrick Bove. Um, I, I reckon I mean, share it in the comments. I'm kind of I kind of got a live thing to do here. I'm not I'm not gonna hold you up, but yeah. Um, so Saad says it makes sense to hone your chops in small business. I keep getting in the way of myself, where the competition is lower. I'll tell you what, dude. I mean that, that makes a lot of sense. Like you don't have to write for Agora. Like, everybody who's selling anything in the world, and there's a lot of people selling a lot of stuff on the internet, need help. A lot of them aren't, like, professionally trained salesmen or copywriters. And you could do a lot of good for them if you just take these principles of new, easy, safe, and big. I have a friend out in California. <laughs> he keeps trying to get me to work on his website. I still don't have time. And, uh, I mean, he's a hustler. He's selling. He's, like, an entrepreneur, like, through and through. He's coming up with, like, a new idea, a new business, like, every month and he'll have all this he'll be he'll be trying to get his products out and sell them and and he's uh but he, he's selling and i can i can i can tell him in like five minutes of looking at like his new website or something like that like dude if you if you just include something to say it's breakthrough because he's selling like he's selling weird high-tech ai stuff he's uh super he's out there dude um and it's like bro you you've got this brand new ai technology and for whatever reason you haven't once said you're the only company doing this like you are, and you should mention that, and you should make it very exclusive, and you should make it new, and you're the only person doing it. And it's just like little things like that. There are hustlers out there who are so busy running their business. There are hustlers out there who are so busy like creating and, and working on their products and stuff like that, and they are not trained salesmen. They're creators, right? So does it make sense to hone your chops in small business? Sure, dude. You can move the needle in a big way for a small businessman who's so wrapped up in his creation that he's not like professionally trained to sell it, right? So definitely, nothing wrong with that. Um, you don't have to write for Agora Financial to be a copywriter. Like you don't have to go to you don't have to go to like one of the giant powerhouses. You could definitely. I mean, people make a living freelance copywriting all the time doing that, right? If you can write a sales letter or even a Facebook ad, right, that brings in seven th or several thousand dollars a month or something, then yes, dude, they'll pay you. I don't know, whatever your retainer fee, okay? So let's say you only charge like $1,000 or something for your retainer fee, okay? And you can write one ad that just runs, right? You write one ad and it brings this dude 5000 a month. Okay, he's totally happy to keep you on at 1000 a month or maybe he works out a deal where you take 10%, right? So now you're making 500 bucks a month. So that guy's ad is running, as long as it's running, cool. Go write for someone else using the same formula, okay? So maybe that guy didn't make you a millionaire, but he made you 500. That's the beauty of sales and copywriting is I write one letter, right, and then it goes and runs. Now that's running. It's cool. I'm going to move my attention over here to this new letter, and I'm going to write that letter. And then when that one starts running, cool. So now you could do the same thing. You go to you know someone local even if you want to or someone that just kind of needs, needs help with their sales, right? You make them five grand, and they give you 500. Take your formula. Take your ad. You know, repurpose it for another business in another city or something like that, doing the same thing. And personalize it, a little, personalize it a little bit to make sense. Now that guy's making you 500. All of a sudden, you wrote that one a month ago. You just wrote this one, 500 here, 500 here. It's a thousand. All right. Now you've got a formula. You've got the the foundation. You're comfortable. Go find another guy. Now, again, 500. Like it's it's big vision, baby steps. Big vision, baby steps. Maybe you can't live on a couple hundred bucks a month, but you get a couple of these dudes, replicate your efforts, all right? And maybe he comes out with a new project or a new product, and he's like, man, I need help selling this one now. And you say, well, this one costs more money. It's going to be a harder sell. How about we up it from 10% to 15% royalties? All right, now you still got the same 10%, 500. He sells a more expensive product with a higher cut for you. And that 500 turns into, okay, you got 500 here, and now you've also got 1,000 from the other product. 
So now you got 1,500 from this one guy, right? So that's all saying, like, as I, I could have stopped that short a year ago, but you get it. Like, um, it's it's totally um, totally cool to go for small business stuff. Uh, let's see, James Conti, what up? He says completely agree. All right, cool. All right, cool, cool. Looks like uh, had a good back and forth today. But yeah, the point is. As far as like overcoming resistance and practicing copy, if you have something you're trying to sell, then you want to sell it. That's that's the motivation. Like I got a job as a copywriter, and the only way I get paid, I I, I get like a marginal, like a regular person's salary. But if I want to make money, like and, and do well for myself, the only way that happens is if I write copy. I'm highly motivated to write copy. If you aren't selling anything, where is your motivation? So I think step one is to get yourself. First off, comfortable enough where you're not scrambling to write bad copy, okay? Make sure you have a foundation, your back's not against the wall, so you're happy, you're comfortable. Second, get a goal. And by a goal, I mean you need to sell something, bro. You either sell your copywriting services, you help, you know, your girlfriend sell like her uh, basket weaving services on Etsy or something like that. You gotta help someone sell something, or else there is no motivation to write and practice copy. So the practice is in the doing, all right? It's a language. Let me come back full circle here. It's my book, Take Their Money, at kylethewriter.com forward slash book, is a book about the language of copywriting. Now, if you were asking me, Kyle, how do I get good at Japanese? Doesn't that kind of seem like a silly question? Go speak Japanese. Go get in the, the, the practice is in the doing. The practice is in the doing. If you, if you're just sitting in a room by yourself uttering Japanese words to yourself, you're not really going to get much better, I don't think. Um, so the practice is in the doing. You need to go out there. You need to go to Japan and start talking Japanese to with the Japanese, right? So um, that's it, man. I think overcoming the resistance is a matter of having like a goal that truly motivates you. All right, another comment. Uh, Zeth, again, dropping bombs of knowledge. Kyle, watched all your vids. Just keep pumping out great information. Love it. Well, thank you, Zeth. I appreciate your comments. I'm going to give that one a like. Actually, that one's getting a heart. Yeah, on that note, smash like if you got anything out of this one. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, Copy Squad. Uh, really good stuff today. I'm glad for the question about how do you get over the resistance? How do you practice copywriting? I guess the final answer, the verdict, the practice is in the doing. And if you want to learn how to master the language of copywriting, if you want a if you want like a, I don't want to call it formulaic, but if you would love some guidance on how to begin practicing and what what ways are most efficient to practice, go to kylethewriter.com forward slash book and check out my book, Take Their Money. If you're a practicing copywriter, if you are making money right now and want to up your game, there is a research upsell. I have six research video courses, uh, so it's going to be... Uh, it's going to be on that same page, kylerwriter.com forward slash book, and it'll teach you like how to do deep research for your product, your personality, your brand, or guru, and for your markets. All right? That's all I got. Thanks so much for tuning in. Peace out.